So I'm going to share this video with you guys. This is a video that's exclusive for my Blender Octane community, but I'm going to share it here on YouTube because I'm building this Uber shader, which allows us to take like three textures and then you can paint with the with the with either the three textures by assigning them to an RGB color and it actually paints with the displacement. It's really cool. It's in the works. The file is going to be down in the Blender Octane community. For those of you guys who don't know me, my name is Patrick LeVar. I'm learning Blender Octane for the last, I have been learning it for the last three years and I'm sharing my journey. So I want to share this video with you guys unscripted raw cameras broken so now i got to use my cell phone but that's not going to stop me from making content so let's get straight into the video all right guys i finally think i've got it to work thanks to some help some of the members in the community so what we did is now we've got the displacement we're gonna we got three textures and each has a displacement and we assign those three textures to three colors red green and blue and then black is also the default of red so this is my default ground here which is like this rock stone from quickles quicksil bridge so what i want to do here is paint in i want to mix these to, to, like we can already see we got some repetition going on here right okay so what i'm going to do this is like the third time I've done this because I keep forgetting to save the texture map, okay? Now, the original tutorial, he was using vertex colors to do this. Well, we couldn't figure out how to do it with the vertex colors or it, the data wasn't coming through. So we just do it as an image texture map painting and just use red, green, or blue. So I'm going to change this to blue. Come over here. Go to. All right, the camera is frozen, but that's not going to stop me because I'm tired of re-recording this video. So I changed it to blue. And what we're going to do here is I'm going to go and just kind of paint this blue strip kind of something like this, right? Just to see where this is generally going. Now I can paint in the viewport. Ooh, alrighty. Now you can clearly see, look what just happened here. We've changed, woo, there it does. As the displacement kicks in, look at that guys. This is really cool. So what I'm thinking is, you know, let's kind of kind of come something like this. And this is where the fun starts to happen. Now it's heavy. There's, we're using vertex displacement, you know, so there's a lot of geometry. It's subdivided like, 50 times and then I think I even have um do I have a oh I even have a subdivision modifier on on top of that right so let's actually go ahead and kill that for now maybe that can uh, increase our viewport performance so it's it's pretty heavy okay beware so what I'm going to do now is like we've got this rock face and we kind of want that but we can see we got some tiling happening and issues like that and um this this uber shader like we can come in here and change this the tiling easily right here so like if i want to make it bigger or smaller so for example tile number three is this rock face i can make it let's go 2.5 just to exaggerate it and show you guys what i'm doing all right so that makes it a lot more bigger so we get less repetition which actually that doesn't look too bad there right okay and then our, our ground texture is pretty small there which is cool but this is too much i want to uh, you know mix it up a little bit so then we'll come in here and we'll go to green which is my dry mud bed right and then what i'm going to do in the dry metal i'm going to press f and kind of make my brush a little bit smaller and let's just kind of like you know kind of come down maybe like something like that like this dry rock face coming through okay so now my i can tell my paintbrush is way too big and I'm, I'm painting on this mat here so if i wanted to i can literally just yeah we can see way too big okay right it's coming in way too large so we could just come in here and just start painting in here so like let's kind of now the thing i'm noticing like when we start to get down to a smaller paintbrush size we start to get this fall off action that's going to happen and like if i zoom in here you're going to see the fall off is going to really be pronounced and easy to see like you can see here in the texture map how much soft the edge is here and the smaller the brush here it gets a lot more tighter right and now you can see like see what's happening there so it's you know it's kind of like i think if we change a brush or even make a custom brush like a rock brush and throw that in here that might be kind of cool right but we can kind of paint in the in the view here so if i kind of jump something like that there's our rock bed and kind of you know boom and like now you can start to kind of see like we're getting some artifacting from the rock bed um texture right there oh like see you see what happened like we're getting this brush is too sharp now like look at the edge on it. the brush is way too sharp okay so this is where it's going to take a little bit of skill and a little bit of playing around with it but just out of the ballpark it's very powerful like to be able to just paint in your textures with the displacement which i think is absolutely cool and then what even i can do here is like we're getting too it seems like maybe there's too much displacement happening on the rock bed now the whole thing is being controlled by one displacement this one displacement vertex displacement here which is you know i have it kind of cranked up pretty high is is controlling the output of these three separate uh, textures and these three separate textures coming red green and blue 
are being piped into this group node and we jump outside of that group node, these are basically the three textures that I have from Quixel Bridge, right? So now if we really wanted to start individually controlling the level of of uh, texture displacement or like we I think we can just come down and start playing with the I've been just doing this. I've just been playing with the power here. So like I think the rock bed the which is it number two is the rock dry rock bed this one right here dry mud rock bed and i think this is coming in a little too strong so for example if i go to zero now watch this this should go away this artifact should go away boom there it goes away right but now we don't have any displacement at all so if i set this back to the default value of one okay so we got a little of that back and again these are coming from quixel bridge and these are jpeg so i think this will work a lot more better if we had exrs which you should really be using for displacement you should, it, it holds more data right so that looks a little bit better right but now you can just start to come in here like okay we know we're still getting some weird artifacting there so no big deal let's go back to our texture painting and let's just start painting in the rocks that like i would want there to fix that to cover that up and and like this is where the art happens. You just gotta take note when you're getting close like this on your brush size, like I think a bigger brush is better and you'll really have to start playing with your brush fall offs and stuff like that. But let's just say we're using green. Um, I'm gonna go to blue, just kind of dab that there a couple times. This would probably work really nice if I had my pen uh, hooked up here in my welcome pad and use the pen because then you got pressure sensitive going on and you're just gonna add more detail right instead of me just pressing the button down and full on 100 percent okay so there look that kind of covers that up a little bit but again we're getting in there too close and we got this weird little line happening here right which can also happen in nature so like sometimes this might not be a bad thing but this is very powerful stuff guys you can really see the advantages that we can really take and what you probably could do just to improve viewport performance if i jump into shading and let's, we could just mute the displacement. So that's not happening right now. So if I could jump in here, jump back in, come over here and just mute this node right now. Go ahead and shut the displacement down. Okay, so there we go. And then now we can probably just paint with the top, with the, uh, just what we're seeing as far as the texture. So that might improve our viewport performance. Now, there is one issue that you do notice, like in this mode at the moment, I'm using this ground material as my base. And this is actually taking the normals and it's pumping it into, and I forgot to connect the normals up for these other brushes here. I'm gonna have to figure out how to do that. And um, so that the normals of everybody's material gets pumped in here. Because right now, you're, you, we do see me changing it, but we do see the normal still pumping through, even though we are changing it. But that cancels out when the displacement comes in. So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like, uh, it's still work in progress, but uh, I think this is going to be a great asset just to, to uh to play around with here and then on top of that we do have controls for all of the materials like if the if the the rock bed material is looking a little bit too red we can come in here and just dial in let's add a little bit more green to that right we can play with the tint and that will change gives us just more control you can see what's happening there right there it is see so that allows us to tweak these colors all in once or, or for the each one to make them blend in a little bit more and then we also have like AOL, uh, ambient occlusion. So if I kill the ambient occlusion on that, we go to down to zero, put that to zero. It's gonna kill the ambient occlusion on that. See, boom, and then one brings the ambient occlusion back. So these are just other controls. Metalness is gonna control the metalness and then roughness if you want that to be shiny, tint. And then displacement, these are not hooked up yet. So again, I gotta figure out how to hook up the displacement so we can control the displacement from the outside which I gotta figure out how to do, but we can control the tiling like so that that one uh, base ground maybe might be a little too small, we can kick that up to two, see? And then I'm even thinking about running these textures into the chaos texture to mix that up, so that might even be something. So I'm again, I'm gonna post this in the, in the community here, you guys can break it down, maybe we can all work together to build this into a solid asset, because I think this really has some really cool potentials as far as helping us to uh, to build something cool. So I'm gonna take a moment here and try to flush out this scene here and see what we can get.